Welcome everybody. We're just getting everything going. You're good. Records hitting and everything. So yeah, good to see you guys this uh, Friday morning and uh, excited to be here um, to be able to share with you. It's, it's, it's my turn. It's, it's always fun. And uh, today we're talking about, um, we're kind of we're just going back to the basics as to how do we, you know, why do these oils work a little bit and why do different ones do different things. And uh, my intention today is to kind of get, you know, to go over this, this little family essentials kit for anybody who started with those top 10 oils and so you really know how to use them in your home because they're kind of the workhorses of what we do that we're going to go into why some of them work um, as they do and if you don't have that one what else would work for you and we're also going to highlight a few others um, along the way so I'm going to share my screen here and there we go okay so if anybody is uh, on live, feel free to, to go into the chat box and keep an eye on that a little bit. And we'll, we will um, head into that. I'm just trying to think of if it's in the Facebook, I'm not sure that I get that comments, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so we're, this is the, um, back to the, we have an eight week series of continuing education classes and they kind of keep rolling over and each time we do it, it's a whole new thing because they, you get a different presenter. So Dawn has been presenting a lot of them. Um, and now that, now that we're brave enough, we're stepping in to help um, and to share our perspective on some of these. So there'll always be somebody new that's presenting something. And each time we do it, we learn new thing, things. So even if you've seen one before, um, there's so much value in doing this. And even for me, when I looked at this um, using the oils for quite some time and I just fascinated by how the different plant parts can help us we're gonna dive into that part too okay so um, so we're going kind of taking this uh, beyond the basics a little bit but giving you those basics to get started so in the eight-week series um, this is just a so quick snapshots. So we're back here at Essential Oil Foundations. Next week we'll be into daily vitality and help, you know that baseline of nutritional support. We have classes on weight control, emotional health, a healthy body, happy healthy kids, Roma Touch. We've had some ones coming in here on anxiety and pets and all that kind of stuff. So it'll be it's always a good mixture as it goes through. Okay, at the end of our session, I'm gonna show you where to find all the recordings so that you can go back and take a look at some of the ones that have already been done um, for the topics that you're keen and interested in. So this one is our foundations and um, understanding how we use our oils and that's always part that fascinates me is it's great that I love that they work, but, um, but how are they working and what are they doing for us in there? Okay. So um, each of the oils is labeled for us to know how to use them, right? And so if you look at your little bottle, it will say on there um, if it's for aromatic, topical, or internal use. And sometimes you have to pull up that little, there's a little tab on it and there's a little arrow and that gives you some more information in underneath the label. It's kind of sneaky in how they can maximize how much info they can get on one little tiny bottle. And so some of our oils are safe to use. Um, they're all safe to use like aromatically, right? Um, they're mostly safe to use topically. There's some we're going to like do some different things with. And then there's some that are um, safe to use internally, which you know, gives us this extra power because we have such pure oils in our, in our doTERRAs. Okay, um, and so yes, the skin sensitivity is a, is a primary safety issue when we're using it topically, and there's just a few oils that we have to watch out for for that, but also certain, um, certain age groups and you know, sensitive people that might be more sensitive than others that we have to be mindful of in that. Okay, there are a few other safety things is that you always want to make sure you're not um, using them around the eyes and getting them into the eyes. The eyes is such a sensitive area that it's um, it's a bit too much. They're too they're pretty potent for in that area. The ear canals you might put it on the edge of the ear and it will migrate in as it's needed, but we don't want to stick it right down in there. This goes for humans and it goes for pets, right? So even though my dog has you know ear infections and chronic ear infections, the biggest thing I found for him has been the essential oils to help him with that. But I just put it on the tips and then it will kind of work its way in and do its magic, right? 
Um, and same thing with the nose. And if um, there was one caveat to that, we won't go into that one today. But just be careful that it's a very sensitive area, and so that you might, you know, a little goes a long way, and just putting it near the area will help to put it in there, or you can put it on top of the nose, um, and it will go into that area. So say you've got, for example, a nose bleed. We're going to talk about helichrysum in a little bit. Helichrysum is that and liquid band-aid. You might put it on top of the nose, and it will help to seep in and do what it's needed. You don't need to like put it right in there. Um, you know, just being, being aware of, of that. So we have our oils that we can use three different ways, right? We can use them aromatically um, and in the diffuser. I've got mine going um, in behind here. This is my favorite productivity tip when you're at your desk is that have something, have something going, whether it's to brighten your mood, whether it's to get you on task, keep you focused. Um, that's what I need today because there's so much information I want to share and not overwhelm you. So we got to keep it clarity is is key for me today. Um, topically, we can put them on um, our skin. Many of you have probably experienced that with the deep blue um, and putting it on your muscles and how good it feels, or maybe with some digestion, putting it on your stomach. We talked about topically on the nose, if you have a nosebleed, and to help support the, um, the healing in that area. And then we can take them internally. And um, the not everyone can be taken internally, and that just kind of goes along with as we're going to talk about. You know, there's certain plants that we can eat and are safe to eat, and our herbs and all that kind of stuff. They're good for us to eat, and then there's certain other plants like we don't eat trees um, for the most part. There's certain parts of trees that are good, and there's certain ones that they've found to be safe, um, but for the most part, like we don't eat bark and things like that. And so those are the ones that perhaps we shouldn't be taking internally. So there is this handy little chart and you can find this in a lot of reference books will have this and um, sometimes on our bottles, but in the reference book that you got from doTERRA, it will say too, if it can be used neat. And so what that just means is you can put the oil directly on your skin, right, that you don't need to dilute it. Some of them need to be diluted. So something like a hot oil, like oregano, which is in that that uh, Pam Essentials kit. This is a really, if anybody has tried this, to put it on your feet. And I'm pretty good, like I'm not, I don't have very sensitive, I'm pretty thick skinned, I guess would be the word. Um, nothing really bothers me on my skin. But I was um, feeling not so good one night and I was, you know, starting to catch a cold or had something coming on. So I put some oregano on the bottom of my feet crawl into bed and had to jump out immediately and uh, dilute it after the fact and put some coconut oil on there because it does, uh, especially if you're getting a little bit of a fever, it was really, 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 really toasty. So things like oregano oil, it's just um, a good idea to do that. And if you are um, in your wisdom years or the elderly or a child that you just have a, a smaller body system or are sensitive, if you're going through something major, like in a major recovery system with your body, um, it's just a good idea to err on the side of caution and dilute them. So put them in some fractionated coconut oil, and that is going to help them stay longer on your skin, actually. Um, so there's, there's no real downside. You can do either or. People have different preferences, whether they like the meat or, or not. Um, but that's a great way to do it. So if, you don't, if you're worried about sensitivities or you know you tend to like react really strongly to things, it's a good idea to dilute them. And we can just dilute them with fractionated coconut oil. Let me grab one. This little one here is super handy from doTERRA. You can also get some at the grocery store, right? So just using, um, or any oil that you can eat, then this um, works to dilute it on your skin as well. It's just that you wanna use something that's safe to ingest because our skin is our largest organ, organ and it's gonna be going in, right? And some of them, yeah, so some of like oregano are recommended as dilute. Okay. So that's just kind of the, some of the safety things. Um, here's the oregano oil. So ones to dilute that you're going to want to make and you make sure you dilute before you put them on the skin is that oregano we talked about. Cinnamon is another really hot one. Um, think cinnamon hearts, right? It's just, it burns. Um, and let me just see, Marty's not being able to get in. Let's see if I can copy the link here for us to get her in that. Uh, pardon me for one second. Let's see if that works. And um, so she can join us live. Clove is another one that is that tends to be quite hot. 
we um, think of clove, um, especially, you know, with babies. So with teething and that type of thing, you want to make sure that it's very well diluted before you before you use that. Like one drop goes a long way. So you're going to put that in with a fair bit. Like you pre-mix it with your coconut oil um, with that. And then thyme and cassia are also really strong oils to dilute. Um, so the fractionated coconut oil is, is a natural project. The reason, the difference between this and the white stuff that you get is that the heavy ends have been so by fractionated, what it means is it's just taken the heavy ends out of the, of the molecule. Um, just I used to work in the, in the oil business, the petroleum oil business instead of the essential oil business, and that's essentially what we did there, right? Was you're taking heavy ends out to separate different things, and it's just a matter of heating it and some of the ends you know, come off and they, and they come off like that. So it's, an, it's a natural process, it has been heated. So I don't necessarily eat the fractionated coconut oil, I would rather use the other for my cooking. But um, when, it's, when it is, pardon me, get rid of that. Everything always happens on the ends. Okay, um, when, um, when it's fractionated, it stays in this liquid form. And it's really, um, I love using this one with my oils because it doesn't go bad, it doesn't go rancid. So it's been heated just enough that it's not going to be, so it's now inert. So using other cooking oils is great to dilute it. But when I'm making up my roller bottles, I don't want the oil to go rancid over time. And the essential oils, these are such pure essential oils, I've never really had a problem with them going bad over time, but I have had a problem with carrier oils. So the fractionated doesn't do that. It's also typically not an allergic reaction. So if you're using a sesame oil or something like that, people tend to have, you may have allergies to that, but um, I've only met one person so far that's allergic to coconut oil. So it's, it's a little bit safer on that regard. This one absorbs readily into the skin and it actually helps to keep the oil on our skin longer. So there's kind of a debate whether it's better to put the oils on meat or with a carrier oil. Meat, it tends to get absorbed in a little bit quicker into the system and go system systemically through um, just a little bit faster. But with the carrier oil, it stays on longer, right? So it's kind of that, do you want that instant response or can you wait two seconds before it, before it comes in? or two minutes. The, um, it's very soothing on the skin and, and you know, offsets that heated element from some of those hot oils. Doesn't clog our pores. I actually use this coconut oil to wash my face every morning. So it's kind of an Ayurvedic tip that you wash it and it just takes away the dirt. It doesn't clog the pores. It leaves it feeling really, really natural. The other thing that I really like about this, um, it's good for our skin, it's non-greasy. So if you drop this on a non-staining, that's what I wanted to get to, if you drop it on your skin or get it on your clothes, it's not going to make a big uh, make a big deal. If it does get a little bit of a stain there, your lemon oil will typically take that out again. Okay, so that's just some tips about diluting and one of our favorite oils to do that for dilution oils. And this is a really handy chart in terms of you know, how do you dilute it, right? And so what this means is if you were to take your oregano, put my oregano here, here it is. If you take your oregano and you want seven drops of carrier oil to one drop of oregano, right? And so cinnamon, you want four drops to one drop. So cinnamon is not quite as hot as oregano. So cinnamon I can typically put on my skin. Um, for me, that doesn't cause a reaction, but the, um, but the oregano oil, I typically always will. And if you notice, this was a shock to me, I didn't know this, that cassia, you actually should dilute even further. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's a, that was a new one to me, that cassia is even a further reaction, a hot reaction than oregano, which is pretty hard to beat. So another area is to put them on the bottom of your feet. Um, in terms of sensitivities, that's a good spot to, to place them on there. Okay. Uh, so why plants? So essential oils perform many different functions. We are uh, constantly amazed by what these oils can do for us, right? And in the plants, they're doing many different functions as well, right? So it can regulate the plant growth in terms of what's going on. It regulates their metabolism and what's happening in there. Um, 
it functions as their enzymes. So it's breaking down the stuff that they need, right? So helpful for us in that regard too. Um, it's building their immune system, protecting them from pests and so forth, okay? Um, and so all of these things are good for us as well. So you know, we just came off of our summer season. You think about the, the plants and the one that comes to mind is the ones that are going to be insect repellent. Um, and that, that's what the essential oil is doing is repelling that. And that's what I typically think of as what, a, what the essential oils do, but they also do so much more for the plant that is also beneficial for us in terms of regulating our metabolism and our enzymes, helping us digest our food, right? And the big one, of course, boosting our immune system that we, that we get uh, to you know, take part of. So um, when a plant is cut, it produces a resin, right? So when you think about it, like even like you think of a dandelion, and all of a sudden it's bringing that milk out, that milk is super juicy for us, right? Um, and that's initiating healing in the plant. And so that, some of that, some of our essential oils are like that resin, right? That's coming out. Not all, but some of them. Okay, essential oils are smart. They are super, super smart. They absorb into our skin and they go where they are needed, right? This is what I love about them. So they get, they come into our system and they're within I think 20 seconds, they've gone all the way through our cell system. And so they're promoting this proper cell defense, um, this integrity inside our cells. They're warding off environmental seasonal threats um, for us and they're, um, promoting healthy circulation, enhancing our mood, all of this stuff just happens, you know, within, within moments. Um, and sometimes you, you put an essential oil on, and I don't know if you've ever noticed this, where you've put deep blue on in one spot of your body, and you've put it on here, but it's all of a sudden it's helped your back, right? And things like that. It just goes where it's needed in the body. The body is, works so well, just synergistically, um, the plants are put on the earth to help us, right? And we are put on the earth to help the plants. And there's just this you know, symbiotic relationship that they know that it accepts that plant coming in and, and loves that. So we look at our plants now, we have all different parts of the plant, okay? Um, we have the flowers, right, that are, that are opening. They have that sense of beauty in there. They, um, the flower petals are velvety, they're warm, they're inviting all of that um, richness to them. We have the citrus, we have the berries that are that, that fruit of the plant that come out in that you know, summer season of the plant. We have the leaves of the plant that do that photosynthesis. So they're doing that you know, enzyme relationship of the plant within there as well. The twigs, right, that support system that's coming in there. Uh, the bark and the wood, of the plant that that's that stability coming in there and when you and then the resins that come out of that bark and the wood that help to heal right that um is you know as soon as the wood is cut that that resin comes there and is forming that healing that protective layer then you have the seeds right potential that new growth um one of these days and then we have our roots of course they're all important roots that provide that nurturing and that sense of stability um, that grounding that you know anchoring of the plant within the earth so this is a, an interesting look and one of these days we'll have to take a look at the oils on my projects you know since preparing this presentation it's like oh i want to look at this because this tree we think of also in terms of our yogic perspective and our um, dhyana and our meditation and our asana they're all different parts of the tree and so now i'm curious as to some of the different oils and do they relate to those different aspects that we think of in our yoga tree but that's that's to be a different day we'll, we'll come back to this again in a, in a different way but each of these Parts of the plant has a purpose and a reason. And so when we can think about, you know, this provides a, a clue for us or, you know, strengthens our ability to know how to use our oils effectively and to know what we need from our oils. Okay, so we're going to dive into this. Um, and we'll get more and more. There's a whole series on essential science, that type of thing that we can dive into as well. So number one is the citrus and our berry oils. And we have a lot of these, right, within our systems. Um, I think we have a lot of these because we need a lot of these too. Um, so we have our bergamots, our grapefruits, all of those, those citrus oils that, um, and I think of this in terms of the, the pitta nature, our summer abundance, right? So that's that 
that floor or that aspect of, of produce that's available to us that nourishes us. A lot of these are cleansing to us. So in our summer system, in terms of, you know, getting the heat out and moving things out. So even things like in terms of our berries, juniper berry falls into the berries. I always, um, I always tend to put this one in the tree section of my oils, but I'm going to move it now after this into the berries in terms of what it actually does for us. And pink pepper and black pepper are also berries of a tree, which is interesting to think of. Okay, so our citrus are cleansing, they're invigorating, right? They, they give us life, they give us energy, they're uplifting, and they're strengthening, they're nourishing, it's the fruit of the plant, it's that nourishment, right? Uh, refreshing, and they're embracing um, within us. Okay, so the number one that's in the top 10 kit on this is the lemon oil, right? And so when we look at the lemon oil, it's actually the rind of the fruit, not the inside of the fruit, which is really important aspects. So if you're doing your lemon water in the morning, which is how I love to use my lemon or how I start using my lemon first thing in the morning, it um, doesn't affect the enamel on your teeth, okay? So there's two things that I love about it. So it still has the cleansing aspect. It's still going to kickstart our digestive system um, and do all that. It's releasing, removing toxins um, from our body, but it's not affecting our enamel. And the other thing that was that I found really important is it doesn't cause a histamine reaction. So if you are reacting to citrus fruits, those are one of the top histamine uh, reactors within the body that can start to affect our different systems if our body's not in a stable mode. Um, the citrus oils are okay to use still because it's not the fruit part, it is the rind part. Um, I had something else in mind that I was going to go to there, but I can't remember. Uh, yes, so the lemon oil is also really good at our immune protection um, in there. That you think vitamin C and all of that. And oh yes, in terms of plastic, so any of the citrus oils, we don't want to keep them in plastic. You know, they all come in, in glass jars, right? And dark glass jars too, so to make sure that they're going to stay, you know, potent and pure as long as possible. But uh, when you put citrus oils in plastic, you can try this as an experiment, put it in the styrofoam cup, it'll eat it. And so the neat thing about that is that's what it's doing inside of us. So we are naturally taking in plastics. We have so many plastics in and around us that our food is stored in and all that type of stuff that it's impacting our systems within the body. And citrus oils will break those down and get rid of them for us. So it's our big toxin reliever. So lemon oil is one of the first things I like people to start with because it's starting to release all those toxins and do a cleanse for us, a really nice gentle cleanse. Okay, um, other citrus, uh, another citrus one that we're gonna talk about is bergamot. Oops. Let's see if I can go back here. Bergamot is very similar. It looks almost like a lemon, but it has a totally different flavor to it. So if you haven't tried bergamot, it's much softer. So this is one that I love to use for cleansing the skin um, in the wintertime. Summertime, it is highly photosensitive. So that's one thing with citrus plants is that you don't want to put it on and then go out in the bright sunlight. Um, I live in the Northern Hemisphere up in Canada, so it's we don't have to worry about the sun being intense in the winter time, like as of now forward for the next many, many months. Um, photosensitivity is not going to be an issue. But if you live more in the tropics um, or you've got the opposite seasonality going on, that is something to consider that you don't want to put citrus on your skin and go out in the bright sun. The exception to that is green mandarin because it's the green unripe fruit. So that's a great one to still use on your skin or for your morning uplift. Okay. Um, the bergamot is very calm and soothing. It's like, think Earl Grey tea, right? It's the bergamot that's in that. Um, it's really helpful for our skin. So that's a nice one for that. So we added that guy in. The other one that I added in here from our, because I was trying to slip all of our top 10 oils in these. So I added On Guard into this, because when you look at what's in On Guard, we have the wild orange um, in there. And um, that's one of the main ingredients for immune boosting. And so, um, uh, Bongar could go into many different aspects of the tree. We're going to put it in these citrus because of its immune boosting thing there. Um, i trying to think of what else I'm going to say about this one. If you haven't used this one, this is like, to me, like the, the, the dailies, the one that wants to start with, you put the lemon in your oil, 
oil or your lemon in your water first thing in the morning. And then you always want to have a drop of On Guard every day. So whether that's through the, you know, On Guard itself, adding a drop to your yogurt, to your smoothie, to your oatmeal, or just taking a drop in, a veggie cap, however that is, it's super important just to keep your immune system you know, at its peak, especially right now I'm in the fall season here in Canada. And you just want to keep your immune system at top level because this is the season where we tend to see some seasonal effects coming at us. The On Guard, you can also get this dosage within, doTERRA has a large number of products. So there's some soft gels I'm to take or the little, um, little tiny beadlets are super helpful for getting their On Guard in. Okay. These are also, all of these citrus ones, these are, are great for cleansing. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. super good for cleansing our surfaces. So either lemon, adding that into your vinegar and water when you wash down your windows. Bergamot is a good one for that as well. Um, and the on guard, just for cleaning surfaces, this kills bacteria fine, right? There's nothing that's better than on guard for doing that. Um, I shouldn't say that. We've got a few other oils, but in terms of, you know, other products, non-natural products, this is going to beat those hands down. Okay. Flower oils is that next section we go into. And again, we have a lot of these ones. Um, some lots of favorites in there. Clove actually is a flower oil, believe it or not. And I have to look that up. It's the bud. I always think of clove as being a seed, but it's actually the bud of the flower, which is, is new to me as well. Uh, lavender is what I'm going to highlight in here for my top 10 kit. Lavender is, um, oh, before I do that, let's just go into the flower oils tend to be light, um, not as heavy as some of the resins and stuff. They're delicate. Um, they can be sparkling. I can think of one that I think of as sparkling in that way. Maybe geranium falls into sparkling. I, did, I didn't make these words up, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> they're fresh um, in terms of they're radiant and they help us with our focus. The flower oils, um, I'd also say that they're they're calming, they're enveloping, right? That they're, if you think of those leaves and the richness of the leaves, um, richness in terms of what they do for our skin, they're all, these are all really good oils for, um, to add into your skincare regime. They're all really good oils for just protecting, just think of yourself can you imagine just being protected in the, see the thumbelina, protected in that flower, right? And so they're super protective for our emotions and they just envelop us in this warm blanket um, in terms of taking care of us. Okay, and in particular, the magnolia and that one and the neroli, um, super good for just our mental health and our mental well being and bringing us into the light um, in that aspect. Okay. Lavender is one that we're going to talk. It's all things soothing and calming, right? So if you need to like, calm the emotions down, lavender is a super go-to in our family for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we love the lavender touch roller for that, just for on the go, that whenever you need to just like, whew, bring things down a notch. I love the lavender touch roller. I keep it beside my bed. So I've just gone through, just came back from holidays in Europe, so my time change is like totally off. And so I've been waking up at three o'clock in the morning, reaching for my lavender to like, you know, do the feet, the bottoms of the feet so I can get back to sleep and wake up at a reasonable time for our time zone. Uh, so super helpful, I find, for getting me to sleep, lavender, chamomile, all of those for that. Anything on the skin soothing for that. A lavender is one that's even soothing. This is the one that I would put you know, the only oil that I would put close to the eyes um, and, and helping the kids going on within the eyes and the redness within the eyes and what would be happening there. Okay, so there's some, some tips in the lavender. Uh, sunburns, anything that's on the skin in terms of uh, a reaction there, super good with, with the lavender on that as well. Sunburns, kitchen burns, anything like that. Uh, this is one too that you can use aromatic topically and internally. So taking lavender internally is, is really helpful for boosting our mood and giving us that protectiveness inside. Okay, helichrysum is one that I'm going to highlight that's not in our top 10, but it's one of those go-to um, oils. And it's, it tends to be kind of a reward oil that you build your points up towards because it is a little bit on the crazy end, but it's definitely worth, worth every little penny for it. It is like a liquid band-aid, it is, you know, healing for the skin. It's also healing for our deeper inner wounds and helping us just to bring ourselves into that light, into that, that sense of feeling light and feeling, you know, opening ourselves to, to our future. 
Um, but yes, yeah, so this is what I use a lot in our family uh, for Holy Cross and the um, One drop goes a long way, so you don't tend to use it very quickly, but it is one of those go-to oils that if I was, you know, traveling or whatever, this is one that I always make sure that I have with with because it will it will do a lot in a pinch. And again, it can be used aromatically, topically, or internally on that. And you don't need to dilute it, it's quite gentle or something like that. Okay. The uh, deep blue, I added this one into our flowers because it, it could go in a lot of places as well. But when you look at what's in there, we have the green to green, which is the leaf. We're going to talk about that. It's got some bark, uh, peppermint's a leaf, but then we have blue tansy, blue chamomile, uh, helichrysum, osmanthus, um, all flowers in there, which is surprising. I think of deep blue as such a heavy hitter in terms of our, relieving our muscle pain and stiffness and joint. Um, issues that we might have going on and the flowers have such you know positive or pop you know such ability to be able to help us in those regards so this was one that we use a lot in our family in terms of you know applying it wherever we need to there this is one that's topical um you can for sensitive it is quite strong right so the, the wood degree particularly in that so you may want to dilute it so it does come in a touch version of the oil you can make your own roller bottle and do that or it comes in the rub i find the touch versions they stay a little longer if it's like acute pain i might want to use it neat so it gets in there really quickly but the touch will last longer um, in whatever form that is this is also one that I literally bathe in, right? So adding some Epsom salts in your bath and adding a deep blue to the Epsom salts. So oil and water don't mix, right? So if you add the, the essential oil to the Epsom salts, then as soon as that goes into the water, it gets dispersed all the way through instead of just kind of sitting as a layer on the top of your bath. So this is what I literally bathe in if I've had a lot of physical activity during the day. Okay. Leaf oils, again, we have a huge range of leaf oils. And if you look at the yeah. our top 10 here, we have three um, oils that are in there that fall into that. The, the melaleuca, the tea tree, the oregano, peppermint. But this also comes into all those herbs, right? The basil, cilantro, the cypress. So I come at things from an Ayurvedic um, perspective. There's just really plant-based. These are all of our healers in terms of, especially for, for the gut, right? And super helpful for any digestive issues that we come into on that. So leaf oils provide us with clarity. Think of like peppermint, just that instant like boost, like it clears everything away. Um, purity, they bring things down to that, you know, that essence of what they are. They're definitely fresh and uplifting. Right? They give us lots of energy and that will um, perk me up with that. Oh, here's something. I always thought of Melissa as being a flower. Apparently it is the leaf coming in there. I had no idea. Uh, so the ones that we're going to highlight with this, marjoram is a little bit of an unsung hero um, in this. I'm learning to love marjoram more and more. It's not one that I use a lot. It's maybe not my favorite go-to scent, but it's really good for muscle support. It's really good for relieving any head tension that you might have in there, um, immunities. Um, it's, it's really an unsung hero for that. So it's a good one to play with. These are also good ones to add into your cooking, right? And so the oil is a lot more potent than the dry herb. So this calls for a teaspoon of marjoram. Do not put a teaspoon of essential oil in. You may need a toothpick in the oil thing and then rub it through your recipe. I would start with that, right? And then you can, you can always add, you can't take it away, right? So be really gentle with how you're adding things in, but it can be a great addition to soups, um, barbecue seasonings, a little bit on the, on the salad dressing, things like that would be wonderful with stews. And I would add your essential oils if you are cooking, you can add them in after the cooking so that you get the full flavor so that cooking actually will change the aspect of it and you want to have it um, in the full aspect. Okay, uh, oregano, we talked a little bit about that one and how it's a hot oil. So if we look back at marjoram, aromatic, tropical, and internal, right? It's a spice, it's a leaf, it's totally safe for us to take in. It can be used neat with no dilution and totally fine with that. Oregano, again, aromatic, topical, internal. What we're going to dilute. It is one of those hot ones. It is really spicy. Um, it does a lot for me. This may be that um, gateway oil that you got introduced to essential oils many, many years ago with the oregano oil, which may have turned you up, right? Because it was pretty intense. And it, you know, sometimes if you take it internally, 
either into the membranes of the mouth, it can be a little bit too intense on its own. Um, oops, I'm picking my slides. So, but it is really good for, um, for our health, right? As a herd, we know this, really good for supporting our immune system. When you feel something coming on, this is the this is one to go to for that. I tend to take it in a veggie cap because it, that it's not affecting the membranes in my mouth, um, or I'll dilute it and put it on the bottom of my feet. But also a great cleanser. So if you're looking at um, you know molds and stuff within your bathroom and trying to get that off, super good for that as well. Okay, peppermint. This is you know one of those go tos that we cannot keep stopped in our house at all. Peppermint, just trying to find it in my, in my little case here. It is such a big boost for, it's such a simple oil, right? For lemon, lavender, peppermint, so simple. But huge boost for the energy. Um, just opens up those airways, those pathways. If you're um, active, our families are pretty active. We like to go up and play, you know, girls dance and all that kind of stuff. It's this one totally, again, safe to use aromatic tropically internally. You may have heard um, that little common cash breaks, one drop of peppermint is the same as 28 cups of peppermint tea. So when someone says they're going to have a cup of peppermint tea to kind of give them a boost, I'll say, mm, I'm just going to put one drop of water, one drop of peppermint oil in my hot water. And so not boiling, but hot. And that's going to be my peppermint tea. It's actually kind of spoiled me now. It totally spoiled me for most teas because they taste, they just don't taste fresh enough anymore. They don't taste pure enough. Um, whatever that is. So this is my, my tea of choice. It's just a drop of peppermint oil in that little hot water. Super good for sticking your digestion mess for a big meal. Super good for afternoon picking up. I am one of those people that I cannot have coffee after probably 11 a.m. or I will not sleep at night. So this is my go-to in the afternoon when I just need that little bit of energy boost. Um, but yeah, super good for digestion, for energy, all of those things. Um, to clearing our sinuses, put a little drop in your, in your cup. Um, you have like some hot water, put your peppermint, and you put the towel over and breathe it in. Super effective for helping with that, um, getting rid of any respiratory and clearing everything away. Eucalyptus is another good one to add into that little, little cup mixture of your home remedies. Okay. Uh, no Luca or tea tree, as we call it in Canada, and I think the U.S. is adopting the new tea tree model on that. And um, again, this is a leaf, right? It is distilled, aromatic, tropical, internal. I don't typically think of eating tea tree, but it is totally safe, and it is really good for our immune system in doing that. This is another one I cannot keep in our house. I think this is like on our order every month, but I think it's largely... I know I found myself ordering every month because so I could never find it. And I went into my daughter's bathroom and there was like five of them lined up in her bathroom stall. So this is the teenager's go-to oil um, for blemishes, anything on the skin, any scalp issues that you have going on. Tea tree is amazing for that. And if you've got younger kids and there's something going through the classroom and in within the hair, you know, um, this is a super good way for helping that. And so you can add drop to your shampoo and it will act as that protective element or it'll act as, you know, um, helping after the fact as well. So tea tree, a good cleanser. This is my favorite uh, yoga mat cleanser is actually tea tree and lavender. You know, choose those over the citrus because yoga mats tend to be out of plastics and I don't want to be constantly degrading my yoga mat. So I use um, tea tree and lavender in my uh, mat spray. It's super helpful for that. And just a few drops goes a long, long way for that. So it's really good for any um, antibacterial and that type of things. Powerful plant for us. And then I've added the breed um, blend in here because it is mainly leaves, laurel leaf, peppermint leaf, eucalyptus leaf, melaleuca, tea tree leaf. Um, and we got some lemon peel in here. It's Ravensara leaf. And then we have a cardamom seed. Oh my goodness, I keep switching it. So breathe is one of the other ones that we go through a ton in my in our house. Um, this is my go-to oil at night for sleeping. I find it breathe really deeply. I find it's quieter beside me when I have this oil on. We just finished a big um, trip with my family and we we're staying in some hostels, if you can believe. My 80-year-old father and my 17-year-old daughter staying in a hostel full of people. Um, we kept the breathe on hand, my sisters-in-law and myself, and we would just go around and doctor up the toes of our man folk um, so that everybody else in the hostel could also sleep that night. Super helpful, but good for the energy for being able to 
um, uh, you know, do the, you know, do your yoga practice, concentrate during the day. I use this all, all the time. Okay. Twig oils. So moving on to our twigs. Um, and it's weird to think of oil coming from a twig. You don't think of it having, having any moisture in it, yet. They definitely um, have that in there. So the Douglas for the pedigree, the Siberian for even our wintergreen, which is like my favorite oil of all time because of, you know, my son eats and when I got to see it being distilled in the fall, it's actually the leaf and some of the twigs that are going right into that pot. So we're getting a little bit of both in there. Uh, these are, you know, and you can think of, you know, the, the twig of a plant is younger, it's you know, not as intense. So something like Siberian fir is actually one that we can take and clean, um, which is kind of neat with that. And they've actually sourced it out particularly for that because it receives take and turn huge amount of health benefits when we do that. But our twig oils are strengthening, right? They're adding that structure. Uh, they're clear, they're energizing. This is where the plant is kind of, you know, its energy is flowing through. and um, it's active, it's in that growth stage of its life. You can think about that. And uh, Siberian fir is what we'll talk about here. And it's the needles, the twigs, it's steam distilled to get this. Um, it's helping to balance our emotions. So it's got that stability there in structure. It's soothing anxious feelings. Any of the trees, think about going for the walk in the woods and being in nature. Super helpful for just, you know, you know managing our emotions and bringing down our anxiety. Um, country strenuous activity, it's really good for, for the joints and the tissues and all that type of thing as well. So we can diffuse this one so that aromatically. You can apply it topically. And you can take this one internally, one of the few um, tree oils that's really good for that as well. Okay. Bark and wood oils. Okay, so this is, these oils are really warm. It's that, you think of like it gives us heat and a campfire, right? They're balancing. You can do that, you know, think of a tree pose. Like this is your, your main structure and what you're coming into. They're inspiring. Trees are definitely an inspiration source. I mean, you are not give enough of looking at trees and being inspired by their, by their form, their structure, and their beauty. And then they can be a little bit exotic in terms of what, what they can tell, right? So in here we have our Abobide, which is a Canadian oil. I've got to love that one. Uh, birch, birch is one that we don't eat, right? It's, it's a tree, we don't. So some of them we can, some of them we don't. This is one that you're going to watch for. Uh, cassia is the bark of the tree, right? Um, same with cinnamon, it's cinnamon bark that we're eating. Uh, cedarwood and sandalwood. I'm going to uh, highlight sandalwood in this one here. It is one of those great moment beings for just being in the present moment, for calming things down. So a great oil to use at night. Um, great oil to use before your yoga practice so you stay more present within the body. Um, I love to put this in the diffuser too as well. I have it uh, going right now in my diffuser actually to calm me down and to keep me focused on what we're doing today. Okay, oops, and this one can be used aromatically, topically, and sandalwood can actually be taken internally as well. Okay. And these are, a lot of these are good on the skin. You can think of sandalwood too as a super good skin oil and protecting us within that. Okay, the rhizome and the root. So we have a ginger, spikenard. So this, you know, not always trees. So we think of like the rhizomes, the ginger is like the root of the plant um, that we're dealing with there. Uh, spikenard, turmeric root, that is the root of a grass, right? So it's one of our great success stories within doTERRA um, in terms of baby and how we've been able to help that community there through and then empowering them through creating a business for them to be able to get properly paid for their efforts in, in their in the bed of a plant. So it's earthy, it's grounding, it's centering, everything's great with them. Okay, so on this one we're gonna highlight. The better, right? And vetiver is a really good calming oil. When my daughter was going through junior high, this was her oil of choice, actually. It doesn't necessarily you know, smell that great, it doesn't necessarily taste that great, but it was what she needed to calm herself down and bring her into the present moment. And, and that was really good. And so, really good to keep that night. Um, really, really like this, this drop is really thick. If you get the 
and you tip it over, it takes a long time for it to come out. And when it comes out, it's like it's substantial. Um, and so it is a super ground and super heavy, and there's kind of like a super kind of that comes in rest. It's like if you're traveling, right? It just comes down. And it is in our serenity time, which could be well for our sleep. You could also add just a drop of it over to your lavender and make a different mix that night for your go to sleep. Okay, the resin oils. These are pretty powerful oils, right? So the Kokaiba, frankincense, and myrrh. Right? So really good for inflammatory things. So think about that resin, it too gets hot. This is what's happening to help to right away instantly. So inflammatory response within the body, healthy immune system. They're super rich nourishing for our skin. And they're common emotion. They're made from that tree, that aspect of um, and the stability. And they're heavy, they're thick, they're just kind of like that bed of earth. They, they look like that when they come out of the bottle. Frankincense comes out a little bit quicker, um, but myrrh is definitely one that takes forever to come out. Myrrh is that oil of the gift of Mother Earth. Kopayoba comes from the rainforest, and frankincense will get from Somalia, which is another great success. And frankincense is the one that's in that top 10 kit. And provides us so so much. Um, what about the frankincense? Although the flavor is sneaking in there because it does a lot for us too. Both of these are the top ones for them. You can use this aromatic chocolate internally. It's another one that I take um, every day. But I have my job with frankincense. It's been able to keep myself healthy and um, growing strong into my wisdom years. Um, this is another good one for hands and feet. I love to add a drop of frankincense to my deep blue bath, uh, just for that calming sense that it also soothes through the muscles and the whole body through that, and great for our skin. Okay, Kopaiba, um, I'm going to just highlight that one quickly. It is just this new kind of miracle oil that if, if you're looking for what something needs to be done, this one is amazing for that. And then we come lastly into our seed oils, right? That promise. This one here, I love these oils um, for our digestive system. Right, so they're going to help the liver, they're going to help with our hormones, reproductive system, and digestive support. Uh, so super powerful. We look at other benefits them. In the wisdom of our, our, our ancient years, this is what we were using. And the oils just provide us with that much more potent um, an opportunity. So it's not this dried up pest. It is a lot of just a pure vitality that we're going to be using. So we're going to be super good results for the kitchen. So the one I've chosen that's in our top 10 for this is my top 10. And um, this is the miracle worker. You can take it internally. Again, I love this as a little tea. Because after dinner, you can use it before you eat a big meal to prep your digestive system. It's super good for that. Or you can rub it in your belly. Um, so using it topically in that. Aromatically. I've never, I've never done this digestion. I'm going to have to go play with that. It is going to be totally yummy. I'll have to, I'll have to play with that one. There's so many that you can, you can use. And I use this one a lot. So we have other two formats, but now that's going to be my, my go to is to explore with using digestion. Okay, so that is our little summary of, of the oils and kind of thinking about the plant and what they do. And if you think about, so if you look at the seed, it's kind of that, that area of potential, um, that potential growth, everything is kind of wrapped up to it in that way. Um, and this is there to help us to grow and to flourish and to be strong. Okay, so if you are not on the Loyalty Rewards program already, I'm just gonna highlight this um, because it is it is an amazing gift that we have from doTERRA, and it is not required. So your membership comes and you get your 25% off. That's just across the board whenever you order with that. But they have an extra little bonus program that you can subscribe to to get free products, right? To, so if there's some of those oils, like the uh, frankincense that you want to get another one of, and the helichrysum, and uh, this is another one of those ones that we saved up for. Um, if you want to save your points, that these are some great ways to to accumulate more back and I find that I'm using things in the house all of the time and so there's always things that I'm going to need and I'm, it may not be a lot every month some months it's like we're out of everything and some months I just need a few things 
So they have a reward, loyalty rewards program that is just supreme. Most loyalty rewards programs, if you think of like your credit card, you get 2% or 3% back. So Terrace actually starts at 10% back and increases up to 30% back. So if you think about that, uh, 30% back, you're now saving 55% off your retail prices. And these oils are so potent and pure, that is such good value uh, on that, on those dollars, right? So to participate in that, all you have to do is set it up through your back office, and you can talk to your um, person who enrolls you to help you out with that. And there is, like it's like a one PV, they call it a PV, so product value. This is kind of like their equalizer across currencies and that type of thing, uh, how they kind of you know, judge between, you know, in Canada, we have a different currency than in the U.S., and it's just kind of like that equalizer. So it's all based on the PB. And so we have to work a one PB or another reason I think it's one PB, but like lip, the lip balm, I think, is four. The hand sanitizer spray, the spritzer is like six. So the, the toothpaste is, is down there. So there's sometimes it's just like a little thing that you might need, and we can totally go ahead and do that. The, if you do cancel your order, um, it is cancelable at any time, so make sure you use your points. So that it's, once you start, you're not locked in, so know that you can get off. It's like, mm, I'm just not using it enough. That's totally fine. But once you get in there and start to start to love them, I think I think this will be a huge value for you. So in the first three months when you order, it's 10 percent back, and then it's 15, and it grows gradually up to 30 percent. To get that 10 percent off, though, you do have to place a 50 PV order. So you have to place just any minimum order just to kind of keep it open, keep it sustaining. But 50 PV is where you get that, that product or that percent back. The great thing also about the loyalty rewards is you get all of your shipping back in points. So if you're making a one-time order, you get half of your shipping back. If you make the loyalty rewards, you're getting your full shipping. So even if you're making that small purchase and paying the shipping for that, you're getting the points, whether it's six points or 12 points, for shipping from Canada or from the US. It, um, it gets you that back into your account. So that $6 you just get back to spend, which is pretty nice. So 50, at 50 PV a month, you get your points back, and then you start to grow, right? So three months at 50, you go, you jump from the jump to the 15%. After three months at 50 at this, it could be like one month at 50, one month at 10, one month at 50, one month at, so it doesn't have to be consecutive. It's just three months somewhere in that little, right? That'll go into that. So I always encourage people, don't order like 20 or 30 PV every month. Order like five or 10 and then 50. And then and then say that absolutely you're, you're maximizing mm -hmm. or you're getting to that point, that end point of getting three percent back that much quicker and you're getting your points back that much quicker. So the other neat thing um, is you can get your oils for free. You can you know, earn commissions back, and that's to, at 100 PV is a requirement for that. And 125 PV, there is a free oil that they get you. So if you are kind of on it and you've placed your order before the 15th of the month, there's always a free oil that comes back, and it's usually priced within that um, you know, 15 to 25 dollar range of what you're going to get back in that. So that's that's a nice little freebie in there. And some months they have an extra support. So it might be 150, it might be 200. So this particular month that we're in October is a special. Um, if you place a 200 PV order, you get free oils. You get the Copaiba, you get yellow mandarin, which is we can't buy it, it's not available otherwise. And we get one other, I'll have to go back and look at that. Um, and then if you, so the 125 order, if you place that one, you get a free clementine, which again is another oil we can't get normally. Um, so it's kind of priceless on that one. And then 200, if you do your 200 order before the 15th of the month, you actually get all four of those oils. So you get the 125 plus the 200. Or if you're placing it later in the month, you get the three from the 200. So those are fun ones. And those only happen a couple of times of year where we're getting this extra little kind of bonus freebie um, within that. Um, so that's that's what the loyalty rewards program is. It is you can opt in, opt out. Again, just make sure you use your points before you opt out. And it is considerable value. Their points add up so so fast that you get to. I always like to use my points to try something new or to get something as a little treat for myself. Um, so it's it's super helpful. Or you can use it just to like stock up on those things that you use all the time, like laundry soap and cleaner around the house and things like that. There's be another whole class on, on that coming up here soon. Okay, so if you do want to get you know oils free, and this is a little tidbit for those that haven't heard about that or increasing your income, but Tara doesn't spend any money on marketing. Um, their philosophy is that they want people to have support. 
um, for their oils, right? They want to have a one-on-one -on -one support system in place. And so they reward us really generously for doing that. And so the fast start that you, um, uh, so there's three, three ways, and I won't kind of go through them all, but just know that there's different ways that they do reward us for that. But you can get, you know, a fast start bonus when you first sign someone up that kind of helps you bring them along. You get rewarded for um, creating good teams and you get rewarded for the people on your team. So Tara is different in their philosophy on this and they've actually got it flipped from most uh, network marketing companies and then you get rewarded the further down, you get rewarded more. And so essentially what they do is they reward strong teams and that's basically because they want people to have support both for growing a growing your business, both for how to use their oils and that type of thing. So it is a really, really um, well-designed system that just let, gives us that extra layer of support that we not only have the oils, but you could also be getting your oils for free or um, you know, helping with out with your family income on that. Okay, so there's lots of different things um, in terms of that and that. Um, Anything else we want to say there on that one? I think the only other thing I want to add into that is that as you use your oils and start to use them, they become, well, they become kind of addictive because they work so well and you do naturally want to share. So talk to your upline, the person that enrolled you, and if that's something that you have that you want to share with, whether you choose to do business or not doing business, there are ways that you can get you know, thanked and rewarded for that. Um, or there's ways that you can, you know, just kind of take it on as a, as a lifestyle. Uh, and that's super helpful. And it's something to, to look into for sure. The next class that we'll be looking for next week is on daily vitality. And this again is that little schedule of what we have coming up. So join us next Friday. I hope you got some value from this. I've enjoyed being here with you and being able to share some of this wisdom of the plants. And if you have any questions, feel free to post those in our Heart Nature groups. And we will, there's lots of great people with lots of um, knowledge within them that can help you out with that as well. All right, I will sign off from here. And thank you guys so much for being, oh, one other thing that I was going to do. So we're not going to stop share. Give me one moment. I wanted to show you where all of these live. So after we take the recording from this, it gets placed in um, a YouTube channel. So Dawn has created the Heart Nature um, channel with Dawn. And all of these, so these are some of the past ones. If there's one on pets you can look into. And so that's, you can look up, you can just search Heart Nature YouTube, or there'll be a link here in our research groups for that as well. You can go back and see the history of the different classes that we've had and the different people that have shared their knowledge and their little take on, on things. So go and play. You can I like to put these on when I'm washing the dishes or something like that. And so I'm making this with my time um, and getting a little inspiration while I'm doing those chores that sometimes can be a little bit mundane. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to this. It's been my pleasure. And feel free to um, post or ask questions or email any of those types of things within the group, and we will get back to you. Loving being on this journey with you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.